So you purchased a thermistor and you don't know how to convert its reading into temperature. So how to do that? Let's find out. So what is a thermistor? A thermistor is nothing less than a resistor whose resistance is highly sensitive with respect to temperature changes. And this dependence is shown on the graph over here. From this graph, we can observe that as the temperature decreases, the resistance of a thermistor increases and vice versa. As the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. The main purpose of this video is to explain you how to convert the resistance reading from the thermistors into temperature. Let us imagine a typical scenario that you will encounter in practice. Let's say you have purchased a thermistor and you want to measure the temperature. So this is your thermistor. And most likely you will design a simple signal conditioning circle circuit that will do some filtering or do some amplification and the output of this circuit will be let's say voltage okay or you can also measure the current in the system and from the ohm's law if you know the current and the voltage or you read some of these values you can convert these values into resistance so the resistance will be equal to voltage over the current great now if the temperature in the room or in your lab environment on your or on your device changes you will observe the change of the resistance so the goal is to convert this value of resistance into the temperature now to convert the resistance in the temperature, obviously you need to know some mathematical relation or a graph that relates resistance with the temperature. The first thing you should do, you should basically look into specs of your resistor or your thermistor, better to say, and then you should Google it and you should try to obtain the so-called calibration curve or a calibration data points. So this graph over here shows the calibration set of points. So how did I obtain this graph? Well, I'm using ACC 101 thermistor, right? And if you go on the manufacturer website or on the distributor website, you will find the data sheets. So you can click on data sheets and here you can find the calibration points, right? You can enter them in MATLAB. So these are basically resistances. These are the temperatures. Someone did these measurements in the lab, right? Someone obtain these values right and you can just copy and paste or just manually type this data in MATLAB and then you can simply plot your data and you'll obtain the following graph similarly you will look into specifications of your thermistors you will google it and you will try to find this data however if you cannot find this data that's not the end of the world you can manually, remember, you can manually obtain this data. And the procedure is not so difficult. Here is an idea how to manually obtain the calibration data. To obtain a calibration data, you will need another sensor, right? You will need another temperature sensor. And let us assume that this temperature sensor TS is accurate, such that it gives very accurate readings of the temperature. Now, 
you can place this temperature sensor close to your thermistor and you can observe the temperature reading by your temperature sensor. Let's call this T true. At the same time, you can obtain resistance reading from your thermistor. Now, you already have, by measuring these two values, you already have one point on your graph. So if this is your resistance and this is your temperature, you will simply place here your R true and your T true value and then you will obtain one point on your graph. Now, what you can do, you can change the temperature of the environment. For example, you can place the temperature sensor and thermistor on a hot plate and you can increase the temperature of the hot plate. Or you can somehow manually change the temperature in your environment. For example, you can place both of these sensors, the, the temperature sensor and your thermistors into a cup of water and then you can start to heat up a cup of water and using this, the same procedure you can obtain a number of points for different values of temperature. In this way you can obtain by yourself a set of calibration points. Even if you have the data provided by, the, by manufacturer it's always good to obtain by yourself independently calibration points such that you can test your thermistor. So you want to see does your thermistor provide reasonable readings. Great, now that we have a set of calibration points the next step is to find a function that will map resistance values, the measured resistance values, into temperatures. And we want to find this function or its parameters from the set of calibration points. That is, we want to fit a function or a polynomial or any type of mathematical expression using these points. So how to do that? Well, we will use one very powerful method and that's the method of least squares. And in the sequel I will show you how to do that from scratch such that you can even implement your code in C or C++ in the real embedded system. I have created a post that summarizes everything that will be explained in this video and the link to this post is provided in description below this video. To fit a line through a set of points we need to have some a priori knowledge on the form of the function that we want to fit. In our case we are dealing with thermistors and researchers and scientists have studied for at least last 50 years the relationship with, between the resistance and the temperature and they came up with the following function. This is so-called Steinhardt Hart equation. This equation relates the temperature and resistance and it's a highly nonlinear function right it has kind of exponential form right although you cannot see an exponential form from this expression however this can be transformed into an exponential function and what we can immediately see over here is that we have these three parameters a b and c if we know 
the resistance and temperature, then we can try to find these parameters. That is, we will find these parameters using a least squares method. Okay, so here's our function. Okay, and let's set up a least squares problem on the basis of this function. So the first thing we will do, we will transform the variables. So we will introduce a new variable y that will be defined as 1 over t and we are going to introduce a second variable which will be logarithm of r. Now substituting these values into our equation we will obtain that y is equal a plus b times x plus c times x to the power 3. What is this? Now this is a polynomial, right? So the problem of fitting the parameters of this relatively complicated functions, this complicated function boils down to the problem of fitting the parameters of this polynomial. Now, for every set or for every point on the graph, let's say this point is ri and ti, we can form one equation. So we can define as yi as 1 over ti and xi is logarithm of Ri. Now, we can plug in, the, plug in these values into our polynomial to obtain an equation. We can repeat this procedure for n points. If this is the first point, the second one, and this is the nth one, we can write down y1 is equal a plus b x1 plus c x1 to the power 3 y2 is a plus b x2 plus c x2 to the power 3 and cetera until the nth equation that will have the following form this is the nth equation now, we can write these n equations for n points in vector matrix form. So, we can group all the y's into a vector and we can write this in matrix or vector matrix form. Here, a, B, and C, the parameters that we want to find, will be grouped in a ve vector. And what do we have over here? We have 1 from this equation, right? Since the coefficient here is 1, then the second coefficient is x1, and the third coefficient is x1 to the power of 3. Similarly, the second row has the following form, and the nth row has the equivalent form. Okay, we are going to call this vector Z, this matrix A, and this vector of parameters theta. So the equation reads as follows. Z is equal to A times theta. Okay, this is your equation. Now, you can form a simple least squares problem that mathematically has the following form, minimize with respect to theta, z minus a theta. And this is nothing less than a least squares problem. This function can be expanded as sum of the squares of these differences, y1 minus a 
minus b x1 minus c x1 to the power 3. These will be the errors, right? This is a standard least squares problem. I'm not going to explain how to solve this problem in this video. I'm just going to give you the final solution. So the full solution is very easy and it's easily implementable in MATLAB. The solution has the following form. Theta hat is pseudo inverse of A. Pseudo inverse of A in this case is A transpose A inverse A transpose times your vector measurement Z. So this is how you compute theta if you know Z and you know matrix A, which you can obtain. You can obtain these quantities from the set of data. And this is how you compute your parameters A, B, and C. Right. This step is easily implementable in MATLAB. Easily implementable. This is one line of code in MATLAB. Here you should be careful since the number of points should be larger or equal than three. Since you have three unknowns, you need to have at least three equations. Preferably, you would have to have, you want to have many equations. Let's say 10 or 20 equations, your results will be more accurate. Also, another thing to keep in mind, if you expect the temperature range, your expected temperature to be in this interval, right? then it's better to disregard these points, right? It's better to disregard these points and only to focus on the data in this interval and only to form the equations for this data. Because otherwise, what I can tell you from my experience, your results will not be accurate if you use all the points and you expect that your temperature range will be over here. You're going to introduce some errors. Once we have determined theta, that is, theta consists of the parameters a hat, b hat, and c hat. So the theta hat has the following form. We can simply, we can simply substitute these values into our, our original equation. So if you remember our original equation, has the following form. It has A plus B ln R plus C ln R to the power of 3. Now, what you can do from here, you can simply substitute the estimated values and you can simply invert or not invert you can simply express ti from this function as follows. I'm going to do it over here in order to keep everything on a single slide. So from this equation over here, we can obtain that ti is equal to what? 1 over a hat plus b hat lnr i plus c hat ln ri to the power of 3. So this is our final expression. We have determined the parameters a hat, b hat and c hat. So if we obtain the resistance readings, we can simply using this equation compute our temperature. And this is the end of the calibration procedure. Now, I have created a MATLAB code that does this for you, right? And the MATLAB code can be found on my website. So here is the post dedicated to this video. And if you scroll down, here is the MATLAB code. So what do we do? Here are the resistances, right? I took these resistances from the website that is found over here, right? These are the resistance values. I also took the temperature values from the same website. However, the temperature here should be expressed in Kelvins. That's why I added 273.15. Since this corresponds to zero in Celsius, then 
what do I do? I simply perform all the steps. I trans transform my resistances. I take logarithms of these resistances and define this as x variable. My z variables be 1 over the temperature vector, right? Then I form my matrix A and I estimate the parameters. So this is the pseudo inverse of A times Z transpose. And the values I obtain for my parameters are over here. And if you go on, on the Wikipedia page, you can see that these parameters, these parameters roughly correspond to the values of the parameters that are expected for the device. So A is 1.4, B is 2.37, here is 10 to the minus 3. Let's see what I get for these two values. I get very similar values. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. This video was dedicated to calibration of thermistors. This is a very important step when you do some temperature measurements. And I hope you like this video. And... Have a nice day. Thank you for your attention.